Okay, so now we're getting into kind of the 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 what I consider the 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 part that really really makes the artwork is this lighting effect and the the blending modes. So with your um, your line art layer, let's go ahead and create a new layer above it, and then merge these two together. Hold Shift, select them both, Control E. So what just happened was we merged it with an invisible layer and that turned all of our layer effects into a flat into the flat layer so we have a kind of a, a, a new starting point here so with this let's give this an inner glow on the layer effects palette so let's choose inner glow and we want a darker color so let's go ahead and take a swatch of, of kind of what we burned in here on this blue let's pick something like that and we want to set the blending mode to normal and the size, 5 looks pretty decent. Let's see, 7. Yeah, let's boost it to 7. Kind of like that. And 75% opacity looks good. Um, everything else here looks alright. So hit OK. And then I'm just double checking because we're just kind of winging this. Alright, so let's go ahead and select our line art layer in our color layer. I'm holding control and I'm just clicking on both layers and if then if you let off control and you hold shift and click the folder icon let's just go ahead and dump those two into a folder because we want to save our line art just in case. So let's make a copy of that folder. Does control J work? No it doesn't. Okay. So I don't know what the shortcut is for that. If you just drag <laughs> the, the whole folder down to your new layer you'll get a, a copy of that or that group I guess Adobe calls it. If you know the shortcut to that please leave it in the comments below. I learned so much from you guys. Um, it's 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 incredible. So let's hit control E and that's just going to merge the contents of that group and now we're going to go to filter blur Gaussian blur and let's blur the edges some and let's go to I forget what I did I think I went kinda tall five pixels there we go and we want to set this to hard light, if I remember correctly. There we go. Now you see how it's starting to get that retro futurism look. That really is a cool effect. It kind of blurs our, our dodge, but ups the contrast pretty good. So let's go ahead, and I think what I did is I made another copy of that. So let's make a duplicate. Hit Control F again to blur some more. And then this time, we're going to mask sections of this out. So go ahead and select the mask icon, add layer mask. And then with your paintbrush, we're going to paint black. And we want a soft brush, pretty large. Let's go up to, yeah, let's go to 1,000 pixels. And this is going to kind of break up and give us a little bit of variety. So what I'm doing is I'm basically going to mask out the some of the parts around the mouth, the eyes, more the front of the face. So this is going to allow those sections to be a little bit sharper than the rest, like so. And then one last thing that I like to do is let's well, let me double check if this is going to work. The 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 first layer that we did this to, let's go ahead and make a duplicate. And let's drag it below everything so it's basically right above our what our stone layer would be. Let's set this to multiply. And let's go ahead and filter, blur, Gaussian blur. We want kind of a edge. So let me show you, let me toggle off everything that's up here and show you what it's doing. It's just kind of making um, kind of like a mixture of an outer glow and a shadow type thing and that's just going to kind of soften the edge of our lines a little bit. And there we go it's getting closer much much closer so now we want to do kind of the neon type effect so we're going to go back to our group and we're going to make a, a copy of the line art oh got control J here we go. <laughs> now drag that copy above everything. There we go. We're going to bring back some of the uh, some of the sharpness here. Now let's put that 
in its own folder, hold shift and click the folder icon to add it to a, I guess a group. And we're going to set this whole group to color dodge. Like so. And let's go ahead and take the inner glow off for now. We may want to play with the color a little bit more after this, but let's go ahead and I am going to create a layer above that. And we're going to take our brush and let's see if this works like I did last time. Okay, so let's find a smaller brush. Uh, nine is two. So I think I did around 30 last time. Let's do 35, and we want to paint with white on the foreground. So we've got a new layer. This whole group is set to, um, what is it, color burn? So, you know what? That I think it's color dodge. And is Interglow back on? I think color dodge is close to what we did. Okay, so this new layer, let's go ahead and we're going to find some areas to kind of highlight. So if we find some of the some of the edges here, see how that is kind of a it softens those edges and gives it kind of a little bit of a burst. You want to do it right on the lines. And let's up the brush size just a hair more, 45. And right there it doesn't look good though. Let's find right at a connecting point. And you just want to kind of go around and do something like this. And this is going to give a subtle highlight um, to the basically the, the connecting pieces. Um, and give it kind of that, uh, vary up your brush sizes. It, it's kind of like a, it's almost like Tron where it, it's like the light source is trying to get movement through the line or something. Um, so I'm just going to keep going around and... Yeah, I think 35 is about what you want. And there's no, you don't need it to be symmetrical. You're just trying to kind of vary it up a little bit and give it a nice little spark. Ah, that's a good term for it. It's like a, like a spark line or something. Come around. Kind of like so. We're getting pretty close. This is starting to look pretty sharp, I think. So it's still awfully clean though. I'll get to another point where we're going to kind of grunge it up a little bit with some more texturing. But it, you just kind of do this where you see fit. There's just go around. See how it just kind of it, it looks nice right here on the front actually. So I'm going to add a couple more for some reason right on this line. Sometimes when the lines are except for right there. <laughs> Let's uh, let's vary it up and go a little bit smaller. Yeah, kind of like so. I don't know about you guys. I think this is looking pretty slick. Pat myself on the back. There we go. It's getting late. I'm starting to ramble and talk to myself. This tutorial <laughs> started on a serious note and it's kind of going downhill. But we're gonna finish it. All right. Okay. So now. We have the highlight. The The big trick to giving this some more depth and texture and color is to find a picture of a nebula. <laughs> so I have this picture that I bought off iStock Photo, and that is the wrong folder. Where is my folder here? Pause this while I find it. Okay, found the right folder, and it's a picture of a nebula or galaxy or whatever. So let's go ahead and just drag this whole thing out onto our image and again uh, it's nice if you can find a print resolution uh, version though it does get kind of expensive um, but since we're just using it for texture let's just go ahead and we're just gonna scale this one up and I just need to cover the whole piece so it's it's good uh, for this if you find a nebula that has um, contrasting colors so since our colors here are mainly red and blue. Finding a, a, a kind of this space image that has more yellow or green in it seems to work better. 
and basically let's set this to overlay and I'm going to go ahead and close this out a little bit and that's going to give us our brights and let's make a duplicate copy and we're going to set this to multiply see how that gets pretty dark but this is exactly what I did in the the wolf piece so now for this uh, this top one though the dark one make a new layer above that we're going to go back to our line tool and we're going to do some real fat white lines so I'm going to set this to uh, 500 pixels and let's just kind of do let's do across the eye that way do another one this way and I don't know what this will look like crossed I don't know if it's a good idea <laughs> we'll just do something like that so holding shift with those layers control E and merge them all together and then if you press control your cursor see how your cursor changes when when you're hovered over it changes into a select box just click your layer and then go to your multiply your your nebula layer that's set to multiply and s make sure that's selected and then press the the uh, mask icon again and then hide the layer above and you'll see that what we did was we got this nice uh, masked out layer here so make sure that your mask is selected and then just go up to filter blur Gaussian blur and let's blur these edges up real well so we don't we don't want hard lines but we want it's almost like a sh like subtle shadows going across the the face of this lynx hit okay now in this one the our, our blue line art is coming out pretty bright so I'm gonna make a slight modification I'm going to take this inner glow and let's let's try to really kind of darken it up a little bit more. There we go. Okay, so I've set I've gone back to our line art that is set to color dodge within the color dodge folder and I've adjusted the inner glow a bit to be a bit darker. Uh, because before that blue was just a little a little bit overpowering so the way we had that this inner glow in I basically set the opacity uh, up a little more and I've set the size up so the opacity now is 97 percent and the pixel size for it is nine pixels um, in width on all the edges so hit OK and turn those highlights back on and I think we're pretty close. I mean, this is this is showing you uh, what we did for that last one. Um, I think what I want to do though is we had in the wolf art we had kind of that spiral background type thing. Let's kind of mimic that with splotches of color. So if you go back, uh, go all the way right above your stone layer. And hit a new layer and let's blast this with a little bit of color and let's start with kind of a gold and with using a soft brush so this gold is 225 2080 and I've created a new layer right above the stone and I'm gonna use a great big soft brush do something like like a thousand okay I'm just gonna hit this with some more color just in a couple spots and that looks kind of cool that really pulls up that kind of smoky texture of the nebula and helps um, put another bright uh, color source against are already really bright lines of this this links now the last thing we need to do or one of the last things is I'm gonna come back up here to my nebula layer that's set to multiply and 
we want the eyes to really pop just like we did in the wolf type one so I'm gonna make sure that the mask is selected use a soft brush and I'm going to make the color black I'm gonna darken well it's not gonna it's what it's gonna do is it's gonna hide that part of the nebula so I'm gonna come down to about yeah about 800 pixels so just gonna hit each one really blast those eyes make them pop and then the last big step we did was we added the lens flare type things so I came across a site called think design I think it was called <laughs> lens flares think design blog so if you do a search for it or I'll put a link below um, they have these these free lens flares that are really nice and very very different um, the one I used in the wolf was number 51 I guess but let's try a different one for this cat uh, let's try this I guess that's 24 4 let's open that up and we need to do a couple adjustments first so let's go to image adjustment brightness and contrast and bump the contrast up like so and then let's drag it onto our cat and for this layer set it to lighten and then we can just kind of place it where we want it so now I've got it kind of over there and you can I don't know if you can see very well in the video but there's an edge I'm gonna show you that we're gonna clean that up so I'm gonna hit control T and I'm gonna go ahead and scale this down a little bit because that blast is a little bit overpowering I just want a, a nice kind of highlight in the eyeball like so and I'm just gonna take my eraser and big brush big soft brush and if you see any edges just go ahead and delete kind of around the edge of that image so then make a copy of that control J thank you people <laughs> edit transform flip horizontal and move it into place and there we have we have space cat <laughs> but there you go that's uh I guess that's Evan's take on retro futurism so there you go um, this was a pretty lengthy tutorial um, like I said the original wolf piece took f about four hours and this didn't uh, we didn't even touch the the background kind of effect um, that we did in there but that was just a uh, um, kind of a mixture of the reusing the lines um, in different angles to help break that up and yeah so I hope you I hope you like this I think it came out pretty good I was to be honest I was kind of worried <laughs> that I wouldn't be able to remember how we did this um, but yeah here we go so I hope you dig it and I will put um, a screen resolution version of the PSD um, for you guys to check out I'll try to I'll do a zip file of everything um, you need now as far as the, um, the 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 textures you're gonna have to click links and the nebula there's some free nebula images floating around uh, just make sure that um, you know if you find them on Google or something check the copyrights make sure you're not stealing somebody's uh, space photos because uh, they're awesome pictures and the people that that take these are extremely talented so like I said this one I bought off iStock it was just a couple of dollars basically and it's a good thing to get in the habit of to go ahead and pony up some cash for good stock photography um, so you know you have the rights to use it and you can um, you know you won't get sued <laughs> so again sorry this took so long but I uh, hope you dig it and I will talk to you later